do start before you even know what the yeah. it's really going to look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, uh, so we started with, um, and it was originally going to be a hip hop show because um, I have like you know like the, I, the whole time I was in the Bay Area, I was like obsessed with the um, with, like hip hop and like the open hip hop scene. So I was like, I it's going to be it's going to be um, a hip hop show. And so we got these five um, uh, dancers, like hip hop dancers, and we did um, we did a workshop, and it was so terrible that um, <laughs> like I'm still it's one of the most traumatic memories. I mean, it's pretty much like you know if I said oh a, an Asian American woman is gonna write a show about black identity, you'd be like wow that sounds like it's weird. Terrible. It's even more. It was even more <laughs> terrible than what you imagined it would be. It was so bad. Like, um, it was. It was really bad. Like, we. So at the end of the show, we came up with this thing where, and everything was. Um, the actors were sort of dictating all the content because I didn't really have a lot of content to contribute on my own. So they would. It was almost like um, I describe it as like if you're working with like a personal chef, you know, and you're like, oh well, I really like Halloween. You know, I really like chicken, and like this, these are the things that I want, and I like deep fried things. And so you try to make something that fits what they want. So that's how I was working with the actors, basically. And um, you know, at the end of the show, this is for the first workshop. They all came out and they started like doing these really horrible, like really over the top stereotypical forms of black entertainment, like right in the audience's face. This is like, during the during the, like, right at the end of the show, as sort of like the finale. And so they were like crumping in audience members' faces, they were like singing soulfully. It was like really over the top stereotype, like right in the audience's face. And the audience, and it was loving it. They were loving it, they didn't understand that it was even stereotype because they were so accustomed to this so being. So who was the audience? Um, it, was, uh, it was mostly white people, you know, like there, and there were black people in the audience, like, and they were horrible. You know, because it's like, it's it was so terrible. And the white audience, they were just so accustomed to these stereotypical images, it never even occurred to them that they were offensive. So they were like, yeah, and they were like loving it. And so the sort of like culmination of this was supposed to be, well, it was supposed to make them really uncomfortable. Yeah. And then like the, the climax was the actors like in, we're gonna pull the audience members on stage to dance with them and like engage in this way. And we just thought there was no way in hell anybody was gonna go. But all the white people joyously joined the black actors on stage and they were crumping and they were dancing hip hop style and they were like, thank you for inviting us into your world. And it was really, really wow. terrible. And the actors were like sort of in shock and I was in shock and the black audience members were just aghast and it was really, really um, and then we did a second workshop, um, and, uh, uh, and, and, you know, we obviously got rid of that part, and we made a lot of changes, we made a lot of changes, and, um, you know, and the second workshop went much better, but then black audience members came to me and they said, well, since these performers are dancers and you're making them act, it makes them look like, it makes it look like black people can't act. Because none of them were trained actors, you know, and they were like, the, and, they, and the black audience members were like, that is problematic. Yeah. You know, the fact that they dance really well, but they don't, you know, they're like when they speak, you know, and so, so I ended up um, recasting the show, except for one performer who was an actor, and you know, the other, the dancers, like we replaced them with actors, and then we started again from scratch, like we threw out everything and just started from scratch, and there was no longer any hip hop component, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and that's how this. I feel like your your shows often have really wonderful structures. Can you can you talk a little bit about how you how you think about structure? Um, you know, it 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 tends to um, I mean, it, it tends to evolve kind of slowly. Like I never have the structure first. Yeah. I mean, for this show, it was kind of like you know the actors and I sat around like this and we would just talk. You know, and I'd be like, well, you know, what kind of show would you want to be? what sorts of issues would you want to express in the show. It was like the chef thing, you know, I'm like trying to get, you know, get feedback from my clients on what sort of show I, they would like me to create for them. And, you know, and so like ideas would be flying back and forth and I would like go home and just write something based on our conversation that day and bring it in the next day and then sort of get their feedback. I mean, I never realized the extent to which it really is like I was like a playwright and director servicing my clients, you know, because I would bring it in and get their feedback and they would say like, oh, you know, I want more regular or whatever, you know, like
like so it was very much like a process of me constantly bringing things in. And I was actually not so keen on the idea of dealing with stereotypes, but because the performers were all actors, like that, you know, that was like their daily reality. Like they go into an audition and they're like always auditioning for the crack home, for the gangbanger. It's like those are the only rules available to them. Even on like that, you know, even if they're auditioning for like one of the best television shows like in the world, The Wire, it's still crack war, drug dealer, you know, like it's the same role yeah. it's wherever you go. Um, and, uh, and so they really wanted to address stereotypes. And so I ended up, you know, um, we ended up sort of working with a bunch of stereotypes and um, you know the idea behind it was that I really didn't want to go in. The, I was very gun shy about that after the first workshop, and so I was like, you can never fully inhabit the stereotype because I feel like audience members are so accustomed, you know, black or white. They're very accustomed to seeing black stereotypes embodied in this mm -hmm. very full way, and so it's familiar to them. Yeah. And so we have to defamiliarize the images, you know, mm -hmm. and so you can't ever fully be the stereotype. Something has to be wrong with it. And it can't ever have any sort of feeling of authenticity. Like it has to feel inauthentic the whole way through. You know, so there's never any, you know, because like there's always the danger of the audience saying like, oh, this is the authentic black experience being represented. And when you watch this show, it's not authentic any experience being represented. It's just weird, you know? And, um, and so we ended up arranging the first half you know, we, we were dealing with all of these different forms of black entertainment. There was stand-up comedy, singing, dancing, and, um, you know, these sort of skits. And so we ended up arranging it into, like, the structure of a minstrel show. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half of the play, which I was more into, because um, I wanted to do a show that had no black stereotypes in it whatsoever, you know? Um, that was, like, the most extreme opposite of what yeah. they were used to auditioning for. And so the second half of the show, I wrote um, uh, just to be that. You know, I asked them, what kind of characters have you always wanted to play, but you never got a chance to play them? And then I wrote a play for them uh, based on that. And then um, and then I'm not gonna give away the ending. But but actually, like, the ending was not planned from the beginning. Like, I, I was almost done with that second half of the play um, before I, you know, one day as a joke, I threw in that final ending, and the actors were like, we must keep this. And so that's, that's sort of how that came to be. Wonderful. Uh, I want to sort of open it up a little bit to, I don't know, Lisa, Chris, Tim, if you guys have any questions you wanted to sort of throw in at this juncture. Did you ever get any pushback from the black performers? I mean, you were always soliciting from them, but when you brought things back, did they ever question your insight as, as being Korean American? Did that ever come up? Well, it was really clear that, I mean, from the beginning, I was really careful not to put any of my insight into it, right? So it was just like, the question was never, like, is Young Jean's insight into my identity accurate? It was always like, it was Young Jean's, did Young Jean obey our instructions adequately? You know, like, <laughs> so, that, so that was sort of more yeah. of the conversation. I really was like talking to clients, you know? Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, is this what you meant? And they were like, yes, this part is, that part isn't, you know, it was kind of, it was sort of, it was sort of like that. So it was, um, uh, so there was nothing really for them to ever to push back against, except for just my inability to do exactly what it was that they felt, you know, was right. There was one moment, though, of conflict where um, we, it took us forever to find out, um, it wasn't really conflict, because I didn't fight back, but they did, like, come down. And, um, we, uh, uh, we were struggling forever to find the right song for them to sing in the show. Um, and because uh, we knew we wanted them to sing, but we didn't know what was the right song. And one day, one of them said, you know, um, as a joke, what about the Black National Anthem? And I was like, what's the Black National Anthem? And they were like, oh, you've never heard it? And so they all sang it for me. And I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my god, like, that's amazing. And I was like, well, what? you know, and I was like, yes, why did you sing the Black National Anthem? And they just looked at me like I was insane. And they were like, they were like, Young Jean, in a show that's talking about like, you know, baby killing and like having sex with animals, like that song is sacred. And if my grandmother came to see this show, yeah. she saw me singing the Black National Anthem right yeah. after I talked about having sex with animals, uh, she would kill me. And so <laughs> <laughs> 